It's alive! Hello everyone and welcome to day 23 of Terrorthon. Today we're talking about horror literature. Obviously, long before the days of TV shows and movies, all we had were books. So I'd like to go into the history of horror literature, which goes back further than you might think. It goes all the way back to the days of ancient Greece and Rome, including the works of Hippolytus and Pliny the Younger, and especially Plutarch's The Lives of the Noble Grecians and Romans which was about the spirit of a murderer. Fast forward to medieval France in the 12th century where werewolf stories be began to gain in popularity. A notable example would have been Marie de France's Beast Clarvé, which inspired numerous imitators. Gothic horror was then born in the 18th century. It is generally agreed that a book called The Castle of Otranto was the first ever Gothic novel. In these days, horror was mostly written by women for women, and the stories normally featured resourceful women being menaced in gloomy castles. Then, in the 19th century, horror literature really began to take off, with the works of the Brothers Grimm, such as Hansel and Gretel, which you may know as a children's story, but back in the day, it was very much considered horror. This century also saw the publications of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, Victor Hugo's The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Bram Stoker's Dracula, and it was also the century when Edgar Allan Poe was at the height of his popularity. Then, in the 20th century, everything changed for horror literature. H.P. Lovecraft began releasing some of his subliminal works, and in the 50s, EC Comics began publishing Tales from the Crypt, as well as other horror comic publications, to satisfy the bloodlust of people who of course could not get graphic horror on television or in the cinema. Then, in 1959, Robert Bloch published Psycho, which would later go on to be adapted by Alfred Hitchcock and become one of the most influential movies ever made. Throughout the late 60s and early 70s, more and more highly influential horror works would be published, such as The Exorcist and Rosemary's Baby. And then, in 1979, a little-known author called Stephen King published his first novel, Carrie. And the rest, as they say, is history. Nowadays we have enough horror novels to last a lifetime, and we're getting all sorts of weird genre mashups such as Pride and Prejudice and Zombies. And horror comics also seem to be making a comeback, with the likes of Tales from the Crypt coming back, and of course, The Walking Dead. It of course goes without saying, but horror would not be in the place it is today without some of these highly influential novels. See you tomorrow.